Um, hello, a few things before we start. Um, if it sounds like I'm a bit low energy in this video, that is because um, I am <coughs> I am sick right now. Um, that's why. Um, so if I sound low energy or I sound a bit like I am dying, that is why. Um, okay, um, we're continuing on now. Bye. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have noticed about me, but one of my favorite pastimes is seeing a fandom burn down to the ground. It's honestly a guilty pleasure of mine to see people lose their mind over fictional media. And I've seen plenty of fandoms burn down before. But none of them hold a candle to Miraculous Ladybug. Now, I'll be honest. I like Miraculous Ladybug. It has a lot, and I mean, a lot of problems. And it's honestly one of the most frustrating shows I've ever seen. But call me an abuse victim because this show keeps trying to gaslight me to come back. The thing about this show is that it has a lot of potential to be really good and interesting. But it's held back by some serious problems that build up over time to create honestly a really frustrating show to watch. So today I will attempt to rewrite at least part of Miraculous Ladybug. Also quick thing here. I know that Gloob has been releasing episodes out of order for season 5, and as much as I don't particularly agree with Thomas Astruck on everything, I will follow his wishes and watch season 5 of Miraculous in order. So everything so far I'm talking about is up to elation. And also one other thing, it has come to my attention that apparently the entire show bible of Miraculous has been leaked. I have not, nor do I want to see any leaks. The situation itself is very violating for the show, so covering it in this video would be inappropriate, so I will not be acknowledging any of the leaks in this video. But, without out of the way, let's start. So, I think the first thing I'm going to be covering is the lore surrounding the Kwamis and the Miracle Box. The main problem with these is just that we don't really have enough information on them, but the show likes to pretend that we do. For example, Master Fu giving out the miraculous to two random teenagers because they were nice to him this one time. I understand what the show wanted to do. It wanted to make Master Fu seem mysterious and all-knowing. But as time goes on, we learn that Master Fu isn't omniscient. So, there's not really a point for him just to give out the miracle boxes like that. It just makes him seem like an idiot. There are better ways of creating old and wise and mysterious characters than just letting them make decisions that make no sense. Also, in regards to the Kwamis, apparently in the show, Kwamis are born when a concept comes into the universe for the first time. And, honestly, I don't have any objections to that backstory. I find it really interesting. But honestly, what really just bugs me is how little we get of it in the actual show. Like, the lore for the Kwamis is so underutilized. I did not remember this detail until I looked at the wiki. It actually fixed this problem by having Marinette in Season 2 or 3 figure this out from perhaps Master Fu or Tiki. It doesn't really have to be an exposition dump or anything. Perhaps write a scene where Marinette is focusing on her parents or something where Tiki casually mentions that she's the oldest of the Kwamis, Marina asks if Tiki has any parents, and Tiki explains. It can also just help the Kwamis develop a bit more by having this, because it can make them contemplate if they are just one concept, and if they're only good for one thing. But, I mean, that might be a bit complicated. <laughs> okay, let's talk a bit more about the Order of Miraculouses, or whatever it's called. I'll be honest, I really don't understand what exactly the order is, because we get such little of it in the series. But again, the show likes to pretend that we have more. It just kind of seems like they're strict and they're dead. It also confuses me how the Kwamis fit into it, like, okay, were they just okay with being enslaved, I guess? Or does it even count as slavery? Were they just okay with this? I... It just, it confuses me to no end, so let's flesh it out a bit more. What if the Kwamis were manipulated before into doing a lot of destruction? Going by what we see in the show, it's obvious that Kwamis are pretty powerful. And honestly, it kind of looks like Kwamis are pretty easily to manipulate into what you want. I.e. Gabriel, and even that one guardian that we see in season 4. What if they were misused by a lot of people into doing stuff they didn't want to do? 
Then eventually a group of people, i.e. the guardianship, came along that specifically wanted to use the Kwamis, their powers, for good. And the Kwamis, because of how much they had been manipulated and forced to do horrifying things, went along with it because they were just sick of being mistreated. I really just want the series to flesh out the Kwamis' personalities a bit more because they're such a vocal part to the series. I think about just giving them a little bit of backstory and personality can really honestly just drive home a main point about the series, especially about manipulation, which we all know is, I'd say, a pretty big part of Miraculous. <laughs> Gabriel. A huge thing that I also see in the series is that I think the show doesn't want us to like the guardianship. So why can't eventually the guardians that were supposed to protect people and started out with good intentions got more strict, more corrupt? It would give us a bit of an explanation to what went wrong with Master Fu and actually make him a sympathetic character. I think this could also explain the stupid love triangle that we got in the show. Like, oh my god, that's so stupid. Who came up with want to dedicate just a full video to the miraculous love square i ain't got that type of time but i think a cool idea that the show can experiment with is marinette and adrian breaking out of the mindset of superheroes can't know each other's identities because it kind of seems like the show is setting up a reveal for their identities by the end of the series i mean i mean i think that's what the show wants to do it's it's kind of hard to tell what the show wants honestly but if the Guardians and their morals are what influence the whole keeping your identity a secret thing, then it would honestly give the show at least somewhat of a valid reason, which is more than I can say for what we actually get in the show. I was actually going to make this section of the video about all the quote-unquote villains of Miraculous, but again, I ain't got that type of time. And honestly, I could fill up an entire video just discussing the dysfunctional man of the occasion. I did a bit of research before this video, and I learned that, according to the writers, Gabe, yes, the living candy cape Gabe, is supposed to be a si No, 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 no. The Hallmark Christmas card that I see is not a sympathetic villain. He openly abuses his son, mistreats his employees, never does any thinking about how his actions might affect other people. Nothing, not a zip, nothing. Nothing in this show leads me to believe or feel any sympathy for this lowly degenerate. I think my main problem with him is that he's too one-dimensional. I know, really, the man who hangs out with butterflies all day waiting for someone to get mad is shallow. Who would have dunk it? But honestly, I think the show should kind of lean into the whole my wife is dead bit, if that makes sense. I mean, I would probably be much more invested in Gabriel's character if he just seems, I don't know, depressed? <laughs> Like, he's rationalized in his mind that the, this is the only solution and isolates himself by just not paying attention to everything else. Like, I know the whole thing with him is that he talks through an iPad instead of in person. But if he just, like, didn't care about the world around him, just giving off the vibe of someone who actually needs help, but he's rationalized it in his mind that this is the only way to solve things. I would go as far as to make him not as controlling of Adrian. Like, yeah, occasionally gaslighting his son and doing that weird scent the monster ring thing. But really just keeping him in line to make his son just one less thing to worry about as he tries to bring back his wife. Maybe, and I don't say this lightly, 
making Adrian not a model. I know, shocking. And to be honest, this decision is honestly just kind of personal preference for me because I don't know, the whole idea of Adrian being a masterclass fencer, speaks Chinese fluently, and is a model while also being an abuse victim. I don't know, man. I feel like we're leaning a bit too much into male Mary Sue territory. But so far, those are my thoughts about how to make Miraculous a bit better. And, oh wow, I didn't actually cover that much of the show in this video. Just some background stuff. I do plan on making this a series on my channel. And if you guys are interested, because trust me, this is not even close to everything I have to say about this show. So like, like the video if you want to see that and i don't know general just general youtube stuff share subscribe you you guys get it you guys get the picture yeah so um bye